back to Trinity DIY 29. I'm back with another video. Guys, the garden is explosive right now. Um, I can't wait to share this with you guys. I have had a few setbacks. For instance, broccoli. This is like the third year that my broccoli just keeps bolting, man. I had good heads forming and everything, and then all of a sudden, here comes 90 degree days for a few days, and broccoli is definitely with the seed. So I'm definitely gonna try to replant for um, the fall. But other than that, everything is doing pretty well. Um, guys, the arch trellis is up, stuff is growing on it, so I'm really excited about it. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you guys um, what's going on in the garden. So guys, as you know, I have these four or five flower pots, that five, that I keep on my porch. I ordered more drip lines, so this will be hooked up to drip irrigation. It's just that the drip irrigation has not gotten here yet. Um, but this is the Yod 5 broccoli. Um, I don't really see any action like from heads. I see a little bit of yellowing. If you guys see the whiteness, um, that's just a um, insect dust that I had put because as you guys can see, it had a little bit of insect damage, not nothing too crazy. And this container, guys, it was the pink, um, pink, lady slipper radishes they were absolutely delicious very very bright pink sorry i did not get that on film but they were ready to be harvested and i wanted a salad so you guys know what happened to that i ate it so but right now right what you see sitting in here is a minnesota midget melon i'm gonna try it out because i'm thinking that if i can grow it and it binds out i can grow it on my uh metal banister thing right here so, I don't know. I've tried this before with a watermelon. It did not work. But, why not? I already have another Minnesota midget cantaloupe started in the garden. So, if this one fails, at least I have a chance with the other one. So, I'm excited about that. I think that would look really cool to have fat melons just hanging off of the railing right there. My chamomile is doing absolutely good. Um, it's falling over. It's a little too tall. Um, but other than that, the chamomile is doing really well. I don't have that many petals because we did have a really bad rainstorm. And you guys know rain will destroy your chamomile flowers because it's a very delicate flower. But um, it's definitely still smells good. Um, have not made a cup of tea yet, but I will hopefully be making a cup of tea soon. Down here, guys. These are the California, not the California, what am I talking about? These are the Georgia collards. They're doing very well. That's insect dust on here because as you guys can see, there were some holes. I pulled off like three or four, um, three or four cabbage loopers off of them. So yeah, they were getting devoured. So ever since I put the dust on it, the damage is a little bit, you know, better. I don't see anything else on there. But you can come out, guys, at night with a black light and you can find a lot of those bright green things, like for instance, the tomato hornworm. And I wanna say the cabbage looper too, you can find with the black white. But I've only tested it out with the hornworm. Down here, I have, um, this was what, some butter crunch lettuce. I had one on vacation for a few days um, for Memorial Day. It was basically like a three day vacation. And I had picked a whole bunch of salad to make for my family. So that was a really good way for me to use up a lot of lettuce because this year I had a lot of lettuce. And if anybody that knows or has been following this channel for a while knows that I always tend to have struggled with lettuce because I would plant it too late and it would bolt before I could even eat it. But as you guys can see, it's some brown in there. That's not too bad. The brown is just basically um, because it just got too wet. So I could just go through here and, you know, clean out a lot of the browning and it'll be okay as you guys can see fresh leaves are coming back and the butter crunch is really really good for um lettuce wraps this is the broccoli guys now right now at this stage broccoli is still edible i can cut all these little flower bits off little heads and steam it up dice up all of these uh stems and steam it you can even eat the leaves so what i'm gonna do most likely guys at the end of this video um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take you guys along for, along for the journey, but um, I'm going to be cutting down all of this broccoli, cutting it down small, 
probably um, harvesting it, blanching it, freezing it. And I may cook a little bit just because I want to know the taste so that I know whether or not it's worth. First of all, I'm going to cook a little bit of it to see what it tastes like so I can know whether or not it's worth me to go through the whole blanching and freezing process. But you can eat this. But as you guys can see, they're turning yellow and eventually I'm going to have yellow flowers all over this. So you can still harvest this. And it literally was just a few days. I had perfect heads forming, guys, and it only took three days of 90 degree weather to destroy it. So, yeah. But down here, I have the curly kale that also has insect dust. This plant is just very wrinkly. And I know that plants can get very curly and wrinkly um, when either there's a big influx and change in temperature, which we've had, or either it could be insects feeding on the leaves or feeding on the roots. So I want to go with the temperature because I've checked it. I don't see any insects. So I'm going to say that it was just the temperature. So maybe next year or maybe this fall, guys. That's the wonderful thing about gardening. A lot of stuff, if you don't get it in for the spring, you can definitely get it in. And I do know that uh, broccoli stalks are really good to use when making like a broccoli cheddar soup. So I might be making maybe something like that over here guys um this is just my random garden bed i panicked i did not know what to put in here so i just put a whole bunch of random stuff in here and what i mean by random stuff is i'm not even sure when they get full size how this is even going to work out um but over here i have um some scallion um i got these from the grocery store i usually keep them in my windowsill in my kitchen and just change the water out every few days and you can grow the same green onion over and over and over again. I have one in my house that is in the, um, that's inside of the, one in my house that's inside of the kitchen window. And I've been using that for at least like seven months. And these are more recently new. And I was like, I don't need all these in the window. So I took them outside and look how big they're getting on the bottom. So I'm like, hold on, are they about to form a full onion? Because let me find out these form a full onion because I all my onion transplants died guys onions for some reason are hard for me but yet i can grow potatoes so kind of weird but that's what's going on right here these were like a afterthought these are royal burgundy beans the beans are very beautiful so i said you know what i don't know what to plant here i'm just gonna throw some beans in here and that's what i had and i threw beans in here um will i keep them in here the whole season probably not um in the back this is a black cherry tomato I have a black cherry tomato on the ground and I have a black cherry tomato in this box. And I wanted to do a small little experiment to see what the difference is of how the black cherry tomato is going to grow on the ground versus how it grows in my container. Because I want to see exactly how good the soil that I'm planting it in in my uh, yard is. Because I've never really planted in ground in my yard. I did mix blood meal, bone meal and stuff like that to you know try to make the soil better but i'm curious to know so these are all royal burgundy beans not too many in there down here guys is officially my favorite lettuce that i've grown so far and this is the uh crap what is it called um oak leaf lettuce oak leaf lettuce guys i've noticed it has not bolted at all like you can see i harvested it all before i went on vacation but growing back this one's growing back. This one, I see a tiny, tiny piece of green. So that one may, this one may grow back or it may rot, but I think it is going to grow back. But this lettuce is doing really good. And I mean, we've had multiple 90 degree days and it won't bolt. All my salon, all of my um, arugula bolted. All of my beets, like my watermelon radishes that I planted, they bolted. My red ace beets, I'm going to check on them today, but I believe it's too hot. So I might just pull them out. So no success with that. And guys, look, it's up finally. The arch trellis is here. Um, want you guys to see it. It has a little cathedral style shape at the top that I was trying to bend out, but then I actually fell in love with it. I'm like, I like that it's like a little shape. It looks like a little hut. So when it grows and gets completely filled, it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna go over there in a minute, but guys, I just wanted to give you this good, beautiful angle of the arch trellis. Um, down here very very excited for this you guys can see this is um, 
my one planter that I made basically out of a pond that you can get at Home Depot. So this is basically a pond, it's not even a planter. And there's UV rays resistant, frost resistant, crack resistant, so that's really good. But these are my Kalima beans. And as you guys can see, look at all of these flowers that it's put on. I don't really see any holes, but I will be coming out maybe later on and spraying it with some neem oil just to be on the safe side. But I've noticed the Royal Burgundies, they get attacked every year when I grow them. Over here, guys, this is my pepper bin. It's really big bin. It's nice and deep because I wanted to see just how many peppers that you can grow. This is another little experiment. Guys, when you're gardening, you really want to um, experiment and try different things. You'll never know unless you try. The worst that can happen is that it dies. And guess what? You have next year or some um, plants you have, you know, in a few months. But this is the little pepper bed that I have. They are, believe it or not, guys, I believe there are six plants in here. They are doing wonderful. One thing I've learned about plants, I mean, not just plants in general, but pepper plants, is that for one, they tend not to get very big, regardless of the type. And for two, they tend to do well when they're planted close together. So, I'll get a little bit closer, guys. This is the Lesia. I am looking forward to this Lesia so much but you guys look closely it's not clear there you go you can see that there's forming lots of peppers on here over here is another lesia doing very very well peppers are forming over here guys this was a really really beat up bell pepper to me, the bell peppers, to me, seem like they got hurt and beat up the most when it was fluctuations in temperature. But the bell pepper, it's pretty short, but it's kind of stocky. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to prune it anymore. I'm just going to let the bell pepper do a pepper. Fine. Over here, a taller bell pepper that's starting to produce. Over here is my habanada. Absolutely gorgeous. As you guys can see those little white things. That, those right here, let me show you. If you guys can see right here, these white things, those are um, aphids. So I need to come out and spray for that. Over here, this is the corbachi. And out of all my peppers, the corbachi, guys, the corbachi and the cayons, those were the first two. Those are out of all the peppers I grew, the corbachi and the cayons are doing really um, produced first. Like they literally have peppers hanging on them. And I'll show you in the middle. I did my cayenne because I've learned that cayons grow tall and skinny. And look, boom, here go my first pepper. It was more than one, but I broke one off the other day by accident. But yeah, we have another one coming in right there. So, and I'm not going to lie, guys. I treated this with a lot of blood meal and bone meal. Um, it, my plants have been getting fish emulsion about every two weeks. So it's very... Um, exciting because I feel like that these peppers are doing very very well and each year I never seem to grow enough peppers over here and by the way guys everything has not been watered yet so let me go ahead and cut on that drip irrigation it's hooked up finally spray my phone it's gonna spray me and I just hit the little timer for 10 minutes I'm gonna change it because it's getting really hot so I need it to set it to water but it just cut on and now all my plants is getting the water that they need. But over here, guys, you can see the water dripping out and drip irrigation. That's the beautiful thing about it. But, and once I get more drip line, I'm gonna come out here and really, really like all the leaks, like right here, for instance, that's a waste of water. So I'm gonna cut the lines and insert the drip irrigation that's blank so that I don't have just access water. Cause that's how you attract vermin. They need water to survive. So if you don't want rats or anything like that in your yard, try not to feed them and, and give them moisture. So right here, look how beautiful this is, guys. This is the big rainbow. I do know, I see some flowers right here. Um, I'm definitely going to need to get two, another one of these because I'm going to stack this one, flip it invert it upside down and zip tie it together so that it can be tall because the big rainbow i can tell this is going to be probably the biggest tomato plant i've ever grown but 
it's doing very very well i should have tomatoes forming on here i want to say in a few days i'm just hoping it doesn't get too hot because you know that tomatoes and other plants like peas will start to drop their blossoms if it's too hot now this is just unbelievable i don't know if you guys remember but in my other videos when i was starting these indoors i talked about how the mushroom basket was the one that seemed like it just kept dying like the mushroom baskets just would not grow but look at this mushroom basket look at all of the flowers that's on it it's beautiful and who would have knew it looks like it's a potato leaf variety i'm gonna have to look into that because i'm like i hope i didn't like mistakenly grow something different but that is the mushroom basket guys and if you can see clusters and clusters of flowers and if you read reviews on baker creek's website a lot of people say that they didn't get that many tomatoes so really weird but i feel like that the mushroom basket may be the first to produce which is the one that i'm most anticipating is the mushroom basket and this guys this shows you with what one year of good care can do these are my echinacea plants now look how tall these are to the point that I'm gonna have to unhook these from drip irrigation and probably move them because they're shading my peppers, but I'm not sure if it's that big of a deal yet, but they're really tall. So I wanna try to maybe put them back there and move the tomato up. But look at this. If you guys can check out last year's garden, they weren't even half this size. Um, I treated the soil, they're perennials, treated the soil. Um, this is the second year that they, um, they're they growing in my yard. Did absolutely nothing, just cut them down. Threw blood mill, bone mill. Um, gave the roots some fish emulsion in the beginning of the season, and this is what happened. This is just massive beautiful. It's so beautiful, guys, that like I want to, because you guys, I'm not sure if you know, but echinacea is very, very good um, for your body. It has very lots and lots of health care as well as skin care. Um, skin keys and lots of medicinal properties that's what i was looking for so i wanted to use this because as you guys know i have my business www.creativejourney the number 29.com check me out support my business but i sell a lot of uh, skincare products that are made with all natural ingredients and i wanted to start to grow a lot of the things because i order a lot of my stuff so I was like, you know what, you have a garden. Start growing some of this stuff so that you can save some money. So that's what I did. And echinacea root is really what you're supposed to harvest. That's where the most medicine is, is in the root. Um, I wanted to make an echinacea root tincture. Only thing is, guys, you need to dig up the plant. And when you dig up the plant, the type of system that it has, which I believe it has a tap root, means that you're going to kill the plant. And this is just too beautiful. I don't want to kill it. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I can just pull one and leave two in and then do a cutting and then start another one. I don't know, because I had a small echinacea that I grew from seed. Long story short, left it outside, didn't get enough water for a few days. It died. So that's why you got to be very careful when you bring out your, your transplants outside because they need way more water way faster because in a little tiny little baby cup and they're outside in excruciatingly hot days. So these are the echinacea guys and look a spider didn't moved in, but I've learned to embrace spiders in the garden guys. They really do help um, as pest management and they work for free. So look at all of these blossoms. My phone is doing a terrible job of um, focusing and look how big this one is. It's just beautiful. So, and then I could just keep going, guys. Look at all of them. They're everywhere. They're all over this plant. So, this is going to definitely be something to see. Over here, guys. I'm okay, see sorry about that. Out. But over here, guys, these are my two purple rain tomatoes. This is a compact variety. I threw some bamboo sticks in there just because I feel like they're going to need some type of support. They only get about three feet tall at the tallest because they're a determinate variety. So that's the reason why I decided to grow two of them in this container. Um, move the echinacea back so you guys can see. But it's two of them in there. 
And then I have two Cosmos growing on the side for some color. Right here, these are my Double Pink's Imperial Flowers. Um, I've cut some um, to make a beautiful flower arrangement. Believe it or not, guys, you can make beautiful flower arrangements even with your vegetables that go to seed. I literally took some of these and I took um, a lot of my watermelon radishes that went to seed and cut them because they make beautiful white flowers and put them together and it's a beautiful flower arrangement in my house. I will be making a video on that once something else goes to seed because I didn't think to make the video. I just did it. But these are the Double Pinks Imperial. They did not bloom the first year. They bloomed this year. Over there, guys, that is a, I want to say that that is the Rosita eggplant. The leaves are cupping, um, cupping up and like making that saucer shape. I believe that that's because they need water, which they're getting right now. And if you guys can see, there's not enough drip hose. That was just for now until I got more drip irrigation in. But you definitely want to coil it a few times. So my plant's not getting enough water. Let me go around. Let me go up here, I guess. Go a little bit closer, guys. Those are my teddy bear sunflowers. And they were started on april 8th and look at how beautiful they are i believe there may be too many in here so i might dig one or two up and move them to another part of the garden but they are going to bloom soon and i'm very very happy about that right down here this is my my peppermint comes back every single year don't have to do anything really right here i gotta have to move this this is the a uh, planter that every year I grow my lavender in but as you guys can see wood sorrel which are these little things is taken over and it's getting blocked but the lavender you guys can see it is coming back so I just gotta go through this and I've weeded this so many times guys but for some reason that thing keeps filling up grand finale guys here goes the corn this is the Orchard baby corn from Baker Creek. Um, it's a container friendly variety of corn. I have a ton of corn stalks in there, guys. Never grew corn before. Um, I don't really see anything happening crazy with the corn yet. Uh, yeah, they just look like little corn stalks. I do see some bugs, like a few bugs in here. So I may spray this down with some neem oil, but I feel like I should start to see some type of tassels or something soon because uh, it's been growing for a while and they say knee high by 4th of July. So we're in June. Right here, guys, this is the beautiful black brandy wine. I am so looking forward to this, to have beautiful black tomatoes and I purposely planted it in this location because I believe this gets the most sun is this corner right here. So if you're growing anything that um, turn a dark color, for instance, your uh, any type of dark type of um, less tomato, for instance, or any type of dark type of bean or something like that, it always is better or berries or fruit to give them a nice amount of sun. So that's um, the black brandy wine. Down here, guys, this is the Jewel Echinacea. I mean, not Echinacea, the Jewel um, Double, or Double Hitted Rose Jewel or something. But these are the nasturtiums. I grow a different one there every year. You can use it as a trap crop. So it will basically lure in the insects that want to attack your other vegetable plants and they like that so they will go to that plant and don't hurt your other plants right here guys i hope you guys can still see i have a table queen acorn squash which i'm so excited about and then right next to it i thought that this never grew but this is a big giant head of lettuce in the back guys that i'm gonna have to dig up and move somewhere but i'm thinking maybe if i leave it here it can grow in the shade of the acorn squash and we'll see how that go Another recommendation, Merlot lettuce, guys, get this. The Merlot is just as good as the oak leaf. None of this has bolted yet, and it's just beautiful, fresh. I need to cut that and use it. There were radishes in there that I pulled out. 
These are two Inspire hybrids. There's actually three, so I'm going to dig two up. This is a gray zucchini. It's actually two of them, but they're so close together, I want to damage the roots, so I'm going to cut one out. This, I planted round zucchini, guys. I don't know what's going on, but the round zucchini just never grew, and it didn't grow last year either. Guys, look at these birds fighting in my garden. They're fighting, but okay. This, look how beautiful and strong. These are sugar snap peas. One of my favorite things to grow in the garden to eat. Like, let's be honest, I just eat them outside. But, look at that. They're just so beautiful. And there's a lot of them, so I need to come out and harvest them over here guys i tried my hand again sugar baby watermelon i'm not ever going to give up until i be until i grow fruit 100 percent successfully i've grown the sugar baby watermelon but the first time i grew one i cut it open too early it wasn't done and then the second time i left it on too long so it was mushy so i have to find the, the perfect medium for that right here guys i'm very proud of it this is the Clemson Spineless um, Okra. I only planted one because I don't really use okra that much. I only use it in a few dishes. So, yeah. Over here, guys, is just my tomato uh, wall that I'm creating. I'm waiting to get another cattle panel so that I can connect the tomatoes to them. But we have candy cane zinnias and polar bear zinnias are growing on the ends. They just haven't really came up yet. The first two, I have two of everything. So you see, I have two Black Beauties, two Dr. Witchies, or Witches. I have two Big Rainbows. Actually, I have three Dr. Witchies, I believe. I have two Big Rainbows. I have a Black Cherry. It fell over. If you do not stake your tomato plants early, guys, and they fall over, they will start to get twisty. I've learned that the hard way, so... I have a lot of twisty tomatoes, but it's okay because I'm just going to plant them deeper in the ground and let them figure it out. This is my only paste tomato, which is my federally, so I'm guarding this with my life. Barry's Crazy Cherry, as you guys can see. I, it died, and then I had to put another one. It's just not doing very well, and I don't know why. I'm thinking about just sticking a seed in the ground and just letting Mother Nature do it. And if it was meant to happen, it'll grow from seed, and I'll get something. And in this corner, if you guys can't see it, there's a yellow pear tomato, but it's like barely there. It's died a few times. And right here, guys, I plan on putting a pumpkin right here, a sugar baby pumpkin. I think they're called sugar pumpkin or something like that. And they're really good for like pumpkin pies and stuff like that. And pumpkin is used in a lot of Caribbean food as well. Believe it or not, Jamaicans use pumpkin. So I am going to grow pumpkin right here and I'm guessing it could just trail out down there because I don't plan on growing anything down there so yeah now the green stalk guys there's a lot going on for one it needs more water but this is the uh plant that I'm supposed to be putting in there this is the orange hat and as you guys can see it was starting to develop it but it just needs water it'll come back <laughs> these are the little finger carrots they're doing very very well up here, I have more Merlot. If you see spaces, guys, that's where I pulled my radishes and my cool weather plants out and my arugula. But we have our Merlot lettuce, like I said. And this is at the top of the green stalk, and it still didn't bolt. Right here, I have two kohlrabis. I have no idea if the kohlrabi is going to do good or not because, guys, kohlrabi is kind of a cool weather plant, and we are in the 90s. So not sure about that. Down here, guys, this is crazy. These are the Uzbek golden carrots, and they are, like, going way better than the little finger. So I'm very, very excited because there's a recipe called um, Uzbek pilaf, and I wanted to try it. Guys, if it seems like I'm filming weird, my phone just went dark, so I can't really see what I'm filming. So just bear with me. So I have two of the, the Uzbek, I have two kohlrabis, two merlots that I left in. All of these were spinaches and radishes, and they all got pulled out. Right here are my red ace beets. 
I'm not even going to think that I'm going to get beets. It's pretty hot. But I may be able to get beet greens. And I'm going to try them for the first time. Guys, look at the corbachi. Look at it. I've never had these before. And they turn like red and orange. Oh, I can't wait. And I have another one right here. Over here, guys, I have my cilantro. My cilantro grew big like this. And I don't see any flowers, but I'm not sure if it's bolted. It may or may not have bolted. I haven't tasted it. But next to it, I started slow bolt cilantro. So this is a slow bolt variety. And I said that I was going to grow them next to each other and see how they do. Slow bolt just came up. And this is regular cilantro. So I'm going to taste it and... If not, I may just leave it there and just get some coriander seeds from it. Down here, guys, I have my lemon balm for tea. Growing really slow. I'm contemplating on getting, um, growing another plant in here with lemon balm, like a little tea pocket. Right here, these are green, um, green apple cucumbers. It's two of them in there. It's probably entirely too much, but... I remember I sowed the seeds because I was just so pressed to have some cucumbers out early when my cool weather plants were out. So I have one cucumber. I try not to grow cucumbers in the green stalk because they climb too much and they disrupt the growing habit of other plants, but couldn't help myself. This is a rosemary plant that I put in last year. And guys, it's not growing. I don't see any green in any life. So I'm thinking about ripping it out because it's just sitting there. My other rosemary plant has started to grow rosemary. So I don't know what's going on with that. It could have been that I brought a second or third year plant, which really shouldn't matter because I've had rosemary in my garden for three years now. So don't know what's going on with that. Over here, guys, this is the yellow wax pepper. Grew this in my very first garden. Didn't grow it last year, so I'm going to grow it this year because they make very big like banana type peppers down here is my hyssop it needs to be cut i've dried some but i have not tried it yet so i'm gonna make my first cup of tea to see the flavor of it so i'm really excited so i might make a video on making your own tea blends guys right here these are all of my dragon tongue beans that were getting snacked on so i put insect dust on them so they're starting to form. So I should be getting dragon tongues. There's two pockets of those. I should have did four because I love dragon tongue beans. But yeah, it's two pockets. Down here is one cubanelle pepper, I believe. I'm not 100% sure if this is a cubanelle. I'm hoping that it is because all my other cubanelles died. So I had one that was clinging on a life herb and gave it a home to hope that I could save it. And it looks like it's doing great. And then down here, guys, I have a broadleaf sage that I started from seed indoors. Too bad only one germinated because I wanted to sell some of these. But I'm going to, of course, keep my sage. I'm thinking about putting the sage in with the lemon balm. But then I'm like, no, because they should have their own place. So I don't know. But that's what's going on in the green stalk, guys. I had to bring a table outside, as you guys can see, because... There's so many plants that I'm growing out here. Um, these are the plants that I'm putting out, starting outside today from seed, like my yard long beans. I have Rosina calendula, Brussels sprouts, um, the small sugar pumpkin that I was telling you guys about right here. That I'm um, going to get started today. What else? Uh, I have some alpine strawberry. Never started strawberries from seed before. So I'm just going to sow these somewhere. Not really expecting much from them. What else do I have in here? Oh, my Chinese multicolor amaranth. I'm going to sow that because as a cool, um, a warm weather green. I have slow bolt lettuce. The Taiwan yard long. What else? Borage. It died, so I'm going to try to sow some more. Genovese bagel, basil. I said bagels. That's funny. St. John's Wharf, more sage, bee balm, more dill. So these are just some things, guys, that I'm going to sow out here. A lot of my tomatoes, you can see, they need water. So I will be 
getting them water shortly because they dry out really fast like i come out and water this table i've trimmed off a lot of the deadness because i had them sitting on the ground and realized that a lot of the plants were getting very sick um from being on the ground so i have all the different tomatoes and eggplants and peppers and everything here this is all the stuff that i'm supposed to be selling still um once i give it some water it will be okay and guys the crazy thing is I believe that, I'm not sure, but I think that this is another aster growing, which I'm really excited because they take forever, 100 days. But there's a lot of plants that need to be planted. Um, show you guys, like, this needs a home. This is the Tam Jalapeno. It's growing already. So I have got to give that a home. More Krabachis. The Krabachis are off the chain, guys. They just keep, they're growing. They're the first ones. So um, look, more Krabachis. So I'm going to have a lot of sweet peppers. So I want to have some of them with peppers because people like to see them fruiting. You can sell them better, even though technically, um, from a plant person perspective, guys, do not buy plants that already are fruiting and that already have flowers. You want your plants to not fruit or grow flowers until, they're, um, until they are somewhat, you know, established in their home. Right here, guys, are the potatoes. I forget, but if you check out my potato video, it'll show you which variety these are. But I want to say that there's a there's a blue variety of potato, either purple, whatever color you want to call it. And then I believe there's a red and a white. I believe I planted too many, but you can still plant potatoes, guys. So if you have not started them, do not panic. I'm actually thinking about planting more potatoes, and I was thinking about getting some sweet potato slips. Um, but I have another square foot garden that needs to be put together and I have not put it together yet So that's where those plants will go right here. This was a Chinese eggplant It was doing really bad cut off the leaves gave it some fertilizer gave it some insect dust and it's doing perfectly fine now Look at all the new leaf growth that it has Now and over here guys. Oh my gosh. Look they finally open. This is the cherry rose jewel nasturtiums Look how beautiful. It looks like velvet. And the crazy thing is, I planted the ones on the other side first, and I planted these second, but these actually came to bloom first. Look how pretty they are. I'm excited. I planted a lot of pinks, guys, a lot of reds, whites, because um, usually every year I've noticed that I just keep planting orange, so that's weird. But... Those nasturtiums are beautiful, and I believe there's a sunflower growing in here, too. Yeah, right there. So, I don't know how that's going to work. Down here, um, what this is, guys, just a container. I cut the bottom out, and then I dig a hole, and then I fill it with dirt so that whatever plants I grow can be contained. My boyfriend can still cut the lawn without accidentally hitting the plants because they're inside of the plastic um, planter. The roots can grow on the ground so I can get big, strong, sturdy plants. And everybody, you know, makes out. But right here, these are the Minnesota Midget Melons that I started. It's two of them. Uh, a White Wonder Cucumber. That's some bouquet dill that I started. I said might as well grow dill because I forgot to grow dill because I'm making pickles. So I'm going to need dill. Um, these are lemon cucumbers right there. And then over here, those are some Kentucky Wonder Beans. And what's already growing up the trellis, or the arch panel, right here, guys, these are, uh, I want to say these are zinnias. No, yeah, scabiosa zinnias. So those are going to look really pretty. More insect dust down there. But guys, look how pretty they are. Very, very pretty. And these are the tall telephone pea. They say that you can get about 10 in a pod. So I said, you know what? It's only me and my boyfriend. So let me go ahead and get the tall telephone P. And hopefully I can shell enough of them. You know, that'll be worth my while. But I know that's going to be like all summer accumulating peas. And guys, these are what I'm very, very happy about. These are the Green Beauty P. And they're beautiful. Like, let me see if I can show you a full flower. A lot of the flowers but look how beautiful the flower is and look at all of the peas like look how prolific this thing is they're everywhere peas peas everywhere and they are absolutely delicious okay so my only thing is, is I'm scared 
that these are going to grow. My goal was to get my peas and everything growing up. And you know, peas don't do well once it starts hitting your 90s and your 100s. So I said, once I get the peas growing up, by the time it gets real, real hot and the cucumbers and melons are on their way up, these will be being pulled out so that I don't have to worry about um, too much being grown. I would love to get a second one, but I'm just calming down right now, guys. I don't need to buy anything else. Um, these are just some cute little bags that I found on Amazon, guys. These are really, really sturdy because a lot of my plants, as you can see, they're massive and I'm still trying to get sell a lot of them. So the roots are coming out the bottom and that's not a good look. The, some of the tomatoes are really tall. They're falling over. So I got these. You can adjust them and stuff. So I will be working on that. And that was like a hundred of them for 17 bucks. I'll list that at the bottom of the video, guys, if you're interested. Over here is another in-ground area that I started. This is just a big section of, what do you call, um, um, that is a big section of thousand head kale, which is supposed to get like 10 feet tall. Thought it would look really nice over here. Um, right here is the Black Beauty Zucchini. It's always bigger than everything else. Right here is the Rampicante Squash which gets really big. So I hope that I can trail it up on this fence. That's why I grew it here. And then this is a Dixie hybrid squash. And then I had planted some large rib Swiss chard in the corner, but I'm not sure if that's it or if it's a weed. That's the problem when you have a lot of weeds in your garden. You have to really be able to decipher what's a weed and what's not, because I have ripped out plants before thinking they were weeds. So um, eventually I will get a better fence and a little raggedy thing, but I did that just so my boyfriend knows what not to cut down. But yeah, guys, that's what's going on in the garden. Um, all of the plants, as you guys can see, I have what I want to start calling tomato alley, because there's a little alley of tomatoes. Um, but yeah, guys, I want to show you that a lot of new things are in the garden and you could do this. Like I do not own this house. You can do this in a rental property. You can have a big garden like this in a rental property. And guess what? Everything in this garden can be moved and can be taken with me. And then only thing you gotta do is throw down some seed a few months before you leave and the grass will grow back. You're perfectly fine. Stop feeling like you need to have a freaking farm or a freaking acre of land. I'm not even sure how much this is, but I know this is nowhere near even a quarter acre. And look at all the plants that I fit into this area, guys. Um, over here, this is just my uh, Florida broadleaf mustard greens. I'm very sad. I did not get to eat any of them. Came back from vacation and they're flowering. So I'm just gonna let them flower. I'm gonna let the bees, you know, eat them or whatever. And then I'll make a bouquet. So you guys might be seeing these flowers in my next video of how to make flower arrangements using bolted plants. So look out for that. Um, over here, I'm so happy. These are the 100 day Matsumoto uh, flowers that I've been dying to grow. All of them died, guys. I had 20 of them. So I thank God that four of them came back. So I'm gonna put them somewhere in the garden before they die. Like right here, this is lemon balm. I'm supposed to be putting this somewhere because I know people are gonna wanna buy that. And this is something that I guess I thought was gonna die and it didn't, another Lesia pepper. So, yep, that's everything, guys. It's basically going on in the garden. Make sure that you like, you share, and you subscribe, and I will be back with another video.